Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Sarah Bear Sinnott. I'm the president of Old Ways, and we're in Boston. Thrilled to be here, and I uh, want to thank the organizers as well, Cyril and John, and then also Sonia and Doreen for getting us all here. Um, I'm also honored to be a part of this panel, and um, to be after Neil Barnard, uh, you're a hard act to follow. It's a great presentation. Um, these are my disclosures. So the program that I'm talking about has been funded by the Walmart Foundation, and we also had a lot of um, in-kind in support from community organizations. Um, I work for Old Ways, and we have this grant, and, uh, but the Walmart, Walmart Foundation um, did not have any input into the creation of the pyramid or the curriculum that I'll be talking about. And if you don't know Old Ways, we're a nonprofit food and nutrition organization, and our mission is to improve public health through cultural models for healthy eating, like the Mediterranean diet or the African heritage diet that I'll be talking about. We like to say, let the Old Ways be your guide to good health and well being. And we're not scientists, we don't uh, do scientific research. We take work like the PrediMed or work that Dr. Barnard has been doing and put these into positive and practical programs. And this uh, quote from Michael Pollan in the New York Times really captures what Old Ways is all about. I have yet to hear of a traditional diet from any culture anywhere in the world that's not substantially healthier than the standard American or maybe Canadian diet the more we honor cultural differences in eating, the healthier we will be, what Rick was talking about earlier this morning. And here are examples of uh, great traditional foods from around the world. Old Ways is best known for our cultural models for healthy eating, the traditional diet pyramids um, with the Mediterranean, Asian, Latin American, um, not here, but we do have a vegetarian and vegan pyramid, and most recently, an African heritage diet pyramid. And this is the reason why we're doing what we're talking about. Um, you've seen uh, these charts before. Increase in energy consumption with uh, rise in um, diabetes, obesity, um, with uh, meat consumption increasing as well. And then for the African heritage, for the African Americans, they have particular problems with diabetes. Um, more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes. They have higher blood pressure, more end-stage renal disease. They're hospitalized for diabetes more often, and they die more often. This um, symbol, the Sankofa symbol, is really emblematic of old ways and why we're doing what we're doing with the African heritage. Um, this symbol is an African symbol, and what it it's uh, taking the best of the, the past and bringing it forward. This bird is reaching back and bringing the egg forward um, to bring the best of the past forward. And the African Heritage Diet Pyramid is uh, based on the culinary traditions of the African diaspora, which, is, uh, which are Africa, the Caribbean, um, the American South, and parts of South America. There's a lot of evidence. Um, these are just two studies. We have quite a few um, on our website that show the change when people leave their traditional diets, when they leave their diets of Africa or the Caribbean and uh, adopt a more Western diet. There are a lot more chronic diseases that occur. To put the pyramid together, we put together a consensus committee um, made up of nutrition scientists, culinary historians, and public health officials. And this is the pyramid that we ended up with. And we look at these as inspirations for change, like uh, Dr. Barnard's um, plate, um, a tool that consumers and health professionals can use to incorporate um, these culinary traditions into dietary recommendations. And we're also talking about um, using heritage as a motivator. Uh, Old Way's tagline is health through heritage. And so that looking at heritage as a, a motivator, a reason to change behavior, a, a connection. 
And then looking at the pyramid, um, the base of the pyramid, um, like all of our pyramids, our physical activity, lifestyle attributes, cooking, gardening, um, moving, walking, playing soccer, and then also eating together. The bottom level of the pyramid um, are leafy greens, and the culinary historians told us that um, leafy greens were so much a part of these diets that they're really um, in a category by themselves. And then the next layer up are all the plant foods, um, tubers and mat tubers and uh, um, vegetables, whole grains, rice, beans, and um, fruits. Um, follow, uh, rice and beans are, are very common dishes all over the African diaspora and actually all over the world. It's part of culinary traditions. Um, nuts and seeds, there's seafood in uh, fishing communities. Um, meat is uh, eaten smaller. And um, you'll also see uh, uh, herbs are uh, their own um, category because they give um, cultural identity to food and, and they're very important to um, the culinary tradition. <coughs> but we had this pyramid. How do we put it into practice and, and make it a, uh, a new social norm? We have a number of uh, educational materials. I think you have all of these in your registration material. You've got African Heritage uh, Vegetarian, Vegan, and Whole Grains. But this um, African Heritage 101 explains the pyramid. And you can see on the front, it's about claiming your health by claiming your history. Diabetes is not part of your heritage, and neither is heart disease. You have the power to claim all of this by claiming history. We have a number of resources on our website, setting up a kitchen, um, a pantry, African heritage grocery list, um, also um, recipes. This is a jollof rice, a West African dish. Health studies, a food glossary, and um, we have a quarterly newsletter. We also put together plates. We call these uh, 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 plates um, from the different regions of the diaspora. Um, we put together a soup, a rice and beans dish, and a protein dish for each of the four regions, Africa, South America, the Caribbean, and, and the American South. We have a, a continuing education program for dietitians um, to learn the science, but also to learn about the food and embrace the food traditions. Uh, we may have a, a new hot cuisine. You'll be seeing African heritage restaurants. And most importantly, we have a six-lesson nutrition and cooking program called A Taste of African Heritage. The six lessons, each one um, look at a different part of the pyramid, herbs and spices, fruits and vegetables, mashes, greens, and um, whole grains. We've also just uh, finished one for the Latin American diet. And um, these, uh, we've taught these, uh, we started out with a 15-site uh, pilot and followed it up in 2013 and 14 with 100 sites that did this class. And we measured, um, we took surveys before and after the class, uh, looking at lifestyle changes, behavioral changes, but we also measured weight, weight circumference, and blood pressure. And these are the results. Um, there were big changes in, um, in lifestyle, cooking more, eating more vegetables, more rice and beans. Um, eating vegetarian meals, exercising. And then also, um, there was a reduction in weight, uh, waist circumference, and blood pressure improved as well. And I had hoped to play a video here, just a, a few minutes of it, but I... Sonia, I, I don't see it here in, in the... Um, but on our website, which is oldwayspt.org, um, we do have this uh, wonderful video that shows um, the classes and the, how the participants embraced the food and the culture um, to make dietary changes. So thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be here, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Sara. We move on with the second oral presentation, which will be given by...